I think, I think it's a really beautiful little exploration and narrative storytelling in a medium that we don't really understand how to tell stories in it yet. And, and we're, it's an evolving format, so right now we can just sort of look around inside of the story, and as the technology continues to advance, we'll be able to do more things in story. But for like where we are right now, which is basically like the 1.0 of the format, um, how do you tell a story when you're living you know, within the story, when you could travel through the rectangle and you're on the other side of it, and storytelling becomes um, not just like a tale that's told to you, but something that you're experiencing. It's like experiential storytelling is what I like to call it. I actually think that what, what we did is a lot riskier than if we had done staged scenes and that type of thing, but we traded it for efficiency. It was high risk, high efficiency, I've got to say, we talk about risk-taking yeah. and having the right partners in the room. I think that's part of it, too. Nokia committed up front and kind of let the creative process go, and that can sometimes be a challenge with brands, wanting to, to, to take control of the creative process. But these guys were great to work with. And, and again, you, you already mentioned, Hal, about One Republic understanding and, and try, willing to try different things. I mean, we're all learning in this space. Um, so it was, it was critical to get the right people in the room. I think VR is so disruptive. I think that it's... I don't want to overuse that word because it gets a little cheesy, but it, it's, it's such an innovative technology. I think that um, I would compare, we were talking backstage and all of us kind of came up with the analogy of where it is now with these headsets. Nobody wants to walk around wearing a headset. I mean, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's not the coolest thing in the world, but it's, it, this is the cell phone brick. It's that first Nokia or whoever made it. Now pick up your iPhone 7 if you were lucky enough to get one. Um, and imagine how far that's come in the last 20 years. Imagine the iPhone 1 to iPhone 7, you know, or, or any of the cell phone like uh, evolution. I think that that's how quickly it's gonna evolve. I think that in the initial stages, anyone that's doing original content for VR, which is what this guy is heading up, uh, I think you're gonna, ha you're gonna have to l learn and evolve with the camera and evolve with the technology. As we have a new media, we cannot just box it saying, oh, let's do only stuff that we've seen before so it's safe, uh, because then the old evolution part is just completely blocked. <laughs> Versus we want to just push it. It's a medium where anything as long as, just say even if it's a conversation in a room, if that conversation in a room is engaging enough, like I think that it isn't, uh, the medium itself isn't in interesting enough by itself, but. It, we're using it in so many different kinds of um, ways, like from an educational standpoint, this is probably going to be Howard Kirk in 2016. Um, <laughs> this is going to be the biggest educational platform of all time. I think, I think it goes as far as obviously, uh, you know, sports, gambling, porn, jump on any technology first, right? Um, as they do. Um, and I think, I mean, honestly, there will probably be a day where, and I don't know that I want to watch this, but where CNN is live on the scene in Kandahar or Aleppo, and they're like, put on your VR headset to see an atrocity. I mean, you know, who knows? Thank you, gentlemen, and congratulations.